the meeting uh, is now open and recordings may now commence. Okay? Do we need the microphone on, by the way? Is everyone okay? Yeah, we're, yeah, right. we're okay. Right, thank you very much. So, declare the meeting open. Thank you very much for attending. First item is, has any, have we got any apologies? I do know we received apologies from Councillor Denise Allen. Is anybody else aware of anybody else who should be here who's sent apologies? No? Okay. Are there any declarations of interest, please, in relation to any item on the agenda? No? Thank you. And I haven't been advised of any items, uh, matters of urgency to go on the agenda. Has anybody got anything now that we must take today? No? Okay. And if I can uh, ask you to note that the following item requires the exclusion of the press and public due to the disclosure of exempt information. And that is on agenda item six, the part two exempt minutes. So if you can note that, please. Right, we move on now to the minutes of the last Community Safety and Protection meeting which was held on the 4th of September last year and are now submitted for approval and if they are approved, I'll sign them as Chair. Agreed. Are the minutes agreed? Agreed. Okay, thank you very much. So we now move on to the uh, next item which is item number three and I'll hand over to the Chief to introduce item number three. Thanks Chair. Um, the purpose of this report is to request members approve the, the membership of and the reconstitution of the Fire and Police Collaboration Committee and note the provisional uh, meeting schedule. Again, the recommendations are uh, that we approve the, the reconstitution and note the, the meetings as can described in paragraph 9. Uh, and members will recall you know, we, have, we previously had a, a Fire and Police uh, Collaboration Committee which was established on the 14th of July 2015, and that was created in order for us to keep collaboration under review as part and parcel of work towards the Police and Crime Act 2017. Um, that changed when the PCC became a member of the Fire Authority. Uh, more recently, the PCC has asked to be removed from the Fire Authority, which was approved, um, but she did ask as part and parcel of her submission is if we could reconstitute the Fire and Police um, <coughs> Collaboration Committee, and that's what the, the report reflects uh, this <coughs> afternoon. The membership is described in totality in paragraph 8, which will include the Council of Ireland, the Chair of the Authority, Councillor Shan Sullivan, Vice Chair, Councillor Lynn Thompson, the Opposition Member, Councillor well, Jane Kennedy, the Police and Crime Commissioner, and Emily Spoller, Deputy Police and Crime Commissioner. And then paragraph 9, as previously suggested, describes the, the dates which were being scheduled in for 2019. And I'm probably happy to take any further questions, Chair, if there are any. Okay, thanks very much. Has anybody got any questions, please, or any comments on the report? Can I just ask you? Yeah. We've got five members on it. Mm -hmm. um, what makes a chorus to say okay. nobody turns up or... I mean, some people never turned on. Um, well, the last time we had this um, committee, the quorum then was three. However, that was when we had more members. Yeah. Um, I, I would suggest that three is probably appropriate for um, decision making or a, a, a approval of some papers. So, unless members have got. Okay. Do we want to agree that now then the quorum okay. should be three? Yeah. That's been proposed. Well, well I've just been yeah, here. The, the other thing, if we've got three members from the authority, two from the police, what happens if three members from the authority turn up? Because I'm not trying to say they complain afterwards. But if decisions were taken on the behalf and no and if neither Jane nor Emily were here, it well, could be a problem. If it, three is fine provided there's one from each side. That we we would we would write the quorum for three in the same way as we write it um, for other things where we have more than um, one person from this authority. So yes, it, it essentially would be three. Um, well, a minimum at least one, one minimum. from police and at least one from yeah. fire. Yeah. Chair, I suppose it, yeah. just to carry out so the purpose of that, that meeting, it's kind of, it's construction is to provide over the view of scrutiny really to some of the collaborative work that we are embarking on with Merseyside in particular, we've been called with Mac that includes North West Ambulance and local authorities, specifically uh, tasked at looking at 
know, our statutory duties, I suppose, to consider and keep collaboration under review. But I'm not sure that many decisions would be made there, which wouldn't be brought back to the fire authority anyway, and similar then would be taken there or discussed there and taken back into, into the realms of policing. So I'm not sure that there's many decisions made there, if I'm absolutely honest with you, it's more of a, uh, to scrutinise the, the progress of the work that we are undertaking on their behalf, so more around the public back, around progress, updating around, um, around shared services, and so on and so forth. But I think that we're, Okay. Right. So, can everyone agree with the recommendation on page 11? Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. That's agreed. Thank you. We move on to agenda item four, and on this one, as I mentioned earlier, I think we're going to have a presentation from Jackie. So, okay, Jackie. Over to you. Well, whilst Jackie's just setting herself up, I'll just, I'll just introduce her to the board. Okay. Person calls his request for members. Greenlight performance against our objectives and the performance against the targets and the outcomes that set out in the safe delivery plan 2018-19 for the period August to November. Thank you. Good afternoon. I think I've met you all, but I'm Jackie Sutton, I'm the Integrated Risk Management Plan Officer. And I've been to report to you today on the period April to the 30th of November. Uh, we, we'll include highlights from the functional delivery plans and the benchmark of some of the performance indicators. They're all in your, in your report packs in a lot more detail. I'm just going to have a few highlights. So functional plans are written by each function, obviously, at this time of year. We've just submitted the plans for 1920 to strategic leadership team, which will then go on to form part of the service delivery plan, which will come to yourselves in March time. Um, so, we have 54 action, action points from the functional plans for this year. <coughs> All are commenced in some way or another. Two are on hold, um, one of them being the members page on the new website, because the website's not due to be delivered till around mid-May now. Um, th there are four completed actions. Three of those are finance functional plan objectives, which obviously had to meet a deadline. And one of them, which I was involved in, and I'm very glad to say, was HMI. Um, so that's now been closed as well because we've actually finished our HMI inspection. Uh, many of these actions rolled over from 2017-18. Some of the actions rolled over completely. Some were slightly updated and rolled forward again. And that will be the case again in 1920. Some of these were things like the development of the St Helens Fire Station. Um, and Sorbonne Massey did roll over, although that will be open before start of our next financial year. App development was something which we did this year. Um, we've developed the SIRA app which stands for Site Information Risk and Hazards and this was developed by our in-house team here um, and it's being trialled at two stations at Southport and Birkenhead and eventually this will replace the old SSRI site specific risk information. We've also developed a new national resilience app which is now available to all fire and rescue services in the country. And all stations now report, have a, an electronic form to record their BA tests, their water pit tests, their PPE, personal protective equipment tests, and this will extend to capture driving hours for new drivers and vehicle A routine to complete for each change of shift. And the protection app is the next one to be developed. So now we look at the key performance indicators. The little middle section there where it says cumulative performance to November, that's what I will talk to you about, but obviously all the months are there individually. As you can see, performance has been pretty good, there's a lot really going on there. Again, we're still suffering from the extremely hot weather which we had in June and July, and this is still having an impact on some of our indicators, but actually since August, most, almost all have been under, under target. Okay, so we'll look at the ones which have been under target and performed well. So primary fires, there were 148 less primary fires attended at the 30th of November than there were last year. The attendance standard, crews have managed to achieve the attendance standard on 92.8% of occasions against a target of 90%. And that was even during our busy bonfire period, we still attained the target. Carbon output, which is the measure of CO2 per square metre per building, is pretty around the same as last year, it's not gone up particularly much. Sickness absence, if you look at 1718, 
we were, we were able to target. Our targeted support percent of shifts lost to sickness absence. We were 4.41 at this time last year, 2.93 this year. And if you look at Grey Book, which is the operational staff, a massive improvement. It was 4.95 at this time last year, 3.47 this year. And non uniform staff have stayed under target. They're actually down to 2.17 shifts lost to sickness. So if you look at the throughput of LPIs, accidental dwelling fires attended, we're 43 under target to date and have remained fairly consistent with last year's performance. The only month this year where we exceeded target was June when there were 96 incidents, but all of the months have been lower than that. At the 30th of November there have been two fatalities and accidental dwelling fires, but sadly in January, as you know, we had 32 in an incident in Old Swan, an elderly couple in their 80s. Crews continue to target this area, hotspot the, the area as we always do after a, a fatal incident. There were 58 injuries and accidental dwelling fires and of that 58, 13 were recorded as serious, meaning the majority were slight injuries such as chest or slight smoke inhalation. Deliberate dwelling fires and non-domestic premises have fallen this year, as you can see, it's gone from 77 at this time last year to 66. We had a peak in July. A large proportion of these incidents are in Crown Properties prisons, and um, 37 of the 63 were in prisons, which was a similar number to last year, it was 33 in November last year, so they've not gone up or down massively. Deliberate vehicle fires, as you know, have been an ongoing problem for Merseyside Police and ourselves. Operation Brookdale, has seen a massive impact on taking the scrambler bikes off the street because a large number of our deliberate vehicle fires were bikes and motorbikes. Um, and the numbers fallen and we're actually 105 less than this time last year. Total number of incidents attended and total numbers of fires attended were obviously impacted massively by the state conditions in the summer. But the, the numbers are coming down and now we're within 10% of target. The number of false alarms attended are closely monitored and aside from hospitals, the majority are sheltered accommodation and quite often they're recorded as faults on the system, cooking fumes or aerosols being used in the vicinity of its detectors. Community risk management work closely with these premises to encourage them to manage their systems efficiently but we don't want to discourage these calls. Deliberate antisocial behaviour fires, there were 76 less this year than there were in December last year. During the bonfire period, which is the 19th of October to the 7th of November, there were 366 incidents compared to 392 last year, and much less than the 579 we had in 2016. Nine of those incidents, sorry, at nine of those incidents there was some violence at work recorded, which is the same number as of this time last year. Most of these incidents involved fireworks or objects being thrown at crews or appliances. Recording on our a recording on Oshins, which is our system we use to record this, allows partner organisations to plan in, in advance where we might expect this sort of behaviour. Jack, just before you move off that slide, mm -hmm. just for my benefit and the benefit of the members there, you've got under the number of deliberate ASB small fires, yes. 18, 19, and you've got 16, 17. Oh, sorry, it should be 17. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. okay, that, yeah, that's fine, it's just a yeah. point of size. Yeah. That was to say we spotted the deliberate mistake. It, it was. Did you win the box of wine? We still live with that, yeah. <laughs> so the number of emergency calls received, in fact, all of these, again, some of them have impacted. The number of calls received obviously have an impact from July and August. In July, we had 6,076 calls, which is a huge amount. Uh, but since then, the numbers have fallen, and we've been below target each month. Total secondary fires, there were 4,297 incidents, which is 326 more than this time last year. But 1,751 of that number were in June and July. Total special services attended. Crews attended 2,165 special services to date, um, 77 more than last year. There's no one particular type of incident which is causing this increase. But while we're showing over target, as you know, we discussed this before, some of these we see as a good thing, partly they bring in income for us, um, and we don't particularly want to just decrease these numbers. Um, 
So we're looking possibly for 1920 with a discussion of performance management group about possibly making this uh, quality assurance one with no targets. But again, that's to be discussed. We haven't fully decided that yet. Just, to, just on, again, just to the members benefit there, what Jack is saying there is that some things we got things that we would want to go to. So we want to see those numbers increase. So a lot of work collaboratively with Merseyside Police around support and around of course the welfare and missing persons and so on and so forth where we are actively proactively going out and, and assisting them where maybe in the past we haven't done uh, EMR so emergency medical responses and another example of that where actually our life saving interventions can be the difference between someone's you know, life or death and uh, again that would be classified as a special service call so again you would want to see those numbers increase because we are being as effective as we possibly can be about support some of our partners in delivery of our community benefit. So it's not necessarily <coughs> classified as poor performance. That there are things in amongst that, no doubt, that we could see reductions in um, and we would want to drive down. But the fact of the matter is, there's a lot of things around the relevance of the fire risk space more broadly that we would want to continue to do or to expand. Okay. Okay. Uh, question yeah. to you. Sure. We said the KPI target for not met, but I'm looking at the first, the first two. Mm -hmm. I, I was saying we didn't meet, we didn't meet the time <coughs> at that point. In other words, if, if, if it, it was attended, but there wasn't a time, or were they not just attended? No, no, it means was. the targets are calculated using at least five years historical data. Mm -hmm. um, so we set a target so that we know sort of in what area we're working with the performance. So no, it was just for the more incidents that, that we had previously. You know, Jackie, are you going to show exactly? Are you going to show what did you on the floor? And our response times. I did times. Show that one, yeah. Yeah. On, yeah. If you just go back a little bit, so they are the number of incidents that we've responded to. So yeah. they have seen an increase of the the output measure. Uh, when you look at the performance in relation to our attendance of our appliances within our ten response standard on ninety percent of occasions, uh, the middle section there, which it's described that it says. Our target is 19% of occasions, and actually, you know, in 2019, we were 92.8%. Yeah. So we got there within set time scales to all of those, whatever, 21,000 incidents that we were caught in. So the other one, that's what I'm trying to say, the other one isn't, isn't, isn't a failure, it's just that it was, it was that beyond. Beyond what we answered. Yeah. 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 21,000, probably, as Jackie said, 60,000 plus of those were you know, all secondary fires. Now what you've found is our anti behaviour fires, small fires have probably there or there about probably performed a little better. But a significant number of those fires were defined as secondary fires which were accidental in nature, were down to the really, really hot weather. And so that's what's seen the increases in the inside over that period. Yeah. So what are you saying? It's where the KPI target wasn't met, it wasn't something horrendous, it was just that well for instance secondary fires, maybe just have more so road traffic collisions attended, this is a mixed slide this because obviously the number of road traffic collisions attended has gone up and it's over target. However, the number of injuries and fatalities are within target, which is why we've got a mixture of red and green. Um, we've had 26 more RTCs than at this time last year. Injuries and RTs, RTCs again were higher than last year under, under cumulative target to date. 45 of the 236 injuries were considered serious. So it's quite low in proportion to the, number, the amount of injuries that there were, but 40, 45 were considered serious. There were three fatal RTCs um, to date. We, use, we attend approximately one fifth of RTCs on Merseyside. And our partners at Merseyside Police use incident data called Killed and Seriously Injured KSI. And this data illustrates the bigger picture and has actually shown a downward trend as opposed to our slight upward trend of, of um, RTCs. So we're looking at how we can use that data because we sit on some road safety partnership and we are looking at that data and seeing potentially we could use it in some way in the future. Home fire safety checks, 25,683 HFSCs have been delivered by Ops crews. Obviously they were suspended during June and July's space conditions, so we are working hard to try and get back up to meet the target. 
53.7% uh, of those have been identified from status reports which identify household, <coughs> at least one person at 65 years of age. 5,660 safe and well visits were delivered by prevention advocates. And in total, with operational crews, prevention officers and others, we've delivered 32,406 HSCs to the 30th of November. Okay, thank you, Jackie. Before I hand over to the chief, has anybody got any questions now to, to Jackie on the presentation? Thank you. Yep, Leslie. Yeah, thanks, Jackie. Just on the uh, home fire safety checks, have we got data um, to show where we um, assign those to people or got other agencies involved? I think safe and well, that's what they are, aren't they? Or our crews refer people to high risk of thief, that's right, is it? Yeah, but, but when, when our crews have actually seen the Dunham Health and Safety Check, somebody's property, if then they identify perhaps that person who needs extra help and um, adult social care or you know, appliances to help them with yeah. their mobility, have we got that type of data where we've signed posts to the people, we've got people we've involved other agencies? Yeah, does that share? We will have yeah. lots of hands. So, okay. so, if you look at the, the, the home fire safety checks or firefighters go in, they would more often than not refer on to our prevention teams. Right. So they would say, like, okay, this is someone who's particularly vulnerable. Uh, they wouldn't necessarily directly refer to a third party or another agency. Our prevention advocates would then go out because of the heightened risk and they'd look a little bit more holistically mm -hmm. around the environment in which that vulnerable person living. And then they would be the ones who would call on other services to be provided by that mm -hmm. Age concern and so on and so forth. But I think what the question is, it's a really good <coughs> question, and I think there's something which says out of those 5,660, you know, 4,200 then you know, resulted in a referral to a, a third party, of which X number went to this, X number went to this, X number went to this. Mm -hmm. I think that would be it gives useful. That value yeah, it absolutely. Yeah, ab yeah, absolutely. And whether that's picked up in part or part of it, I don't know, around this kind of scrutiny around. Our home safety strategy, I think that would be a really good question to ask through scrutiny. Um, notwithstanding the fact that I will bring some of that back uh, to the next community safety uh, meeting, too, because I think it's a good question. Mm -hmm. and that's a but we have that information, yeah. there's no doubt. Okay, thanks, Leslie. Any more comments, questions? <coughs> yeah, Peter? Sorry, Jack. I think it's just an observation, Chair. Um, <coughs> on the safe and well visits and the, the home fire safety checks, um, just just in, in our own council in, in Liverpool, a presentation was, was made just before Christmas. Unfortunately, I wasn't in attendance at the um, Adult Social Care and Health. And members of our staff went and presented there about some of the work that goes on. And each and every time that we have presented uh, to, to the, the uh, select committee, They've always been astounded by the amount of work that this organisation does do around protection and prevention of, of various aspects, not just around safety, but about people's health and how it fits in with the wider agenda. So I just wanted to say that it was um, very well accept, accepted. Um, it, people were amazed what was going on. And I think the more we do of this, get out there and say this is what we do you know our firefighters our advocates are not just sitting around waiting for the bell to ring they're actually out there being very very proactive they're preventing and they're protecting so um, just well done to everyone concerned yeah thank you peter thank you very much yeah, yeah just following on from that i mean that, that's a brilliant idea and i sit on adult social care in the world and i don't think we've ever had in my time recently anyway on we haven't had any on home fire service come and present that so perhaps brian or yourself or both of us we could have a word yeah. with the, the yeah. chair of this scrutiny yeah. and try and get it on yeah. our work program because that yeah. would be really help yeah. yeah i think we've got a good story yeah. to tell i think yeah, we should yeah. we should tell it yeah. so people do know what's going on yeah thank you very much anybody else no phil hand over to you yeah i've got nothing more to add really than what Jackie talked about in regards to our performance and everything. I would say, as Jackie made reference there to um, a, a couple of fire deaths that we tragically responded to in, in the old Swan area, and, it, you know, and that takes our figures to, to four uh, fatal fires um, over the course of the 2018-19 period. 
we are running a campaign which kicks off on the 8th um, of this month, so Friday. Um, and it commences at Old Swan Fire Station at 9.45, I think is the point in which people can, can meet and then they will be out and about on the street between 10 and 12. This is a real opportunity for members if they wish to, to join our prevention teams, our firefighters and, you know, and, and the authority itself in going out and supporting the kind of campaign. Um, we will also need to move our volunteers, we will be out and about on the streets too. Yes, it's an opportunity for members to be visible in the communities in, in regard to our response around this campaign. And so the, the opportunity is there should anyone wish to avail themselves of that. I know that we have some councils who are very ready to express their an interest in coming in. That's very, very much appreciated by me and the staff. Okay, thanks very much. Right, so you've got the report in front of you. Can you agree the recommendation on page 15 of the agenda? Me too. Yeah, okay, thank you very much. So we move on to agenda item five on page sixty-one. Over to the chief. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Again, the purpose of the report is to inform members of the outcomes of the arson reduction strategy um, and some of the significant progress we've made in, in convicting some of the individuals who caused us a few issues over the course of the last uh, number of months and years. The recommendations are specifically that you know, we note the effectiveness of the scene of investigations. We're working partnership with Merseyside Police and securing arson convictions. Equally, we note the efficiencies gained by the public pairs due to the partnership working um, and the way that we're preserving uh, evidence. And finally, just to refer reference on the effectiveness of the, the strategy itself. I think probably you've got a, a little bit of insight into the work that the fire investigators do in Merseyside on the basis of the learning and lunch uh, because they were relied on extensively in regard to the arena car park fire. The investigation of scene, um, which culminated in a fire investigation report, but it also something more more broader, which reflected on the, the protection related issues affecting the arena car park too. So they are very good, highly professional, very well qualified individuals, um, and you know, not only ourselves in the identification of cause of fire, but also Merseyside Police rely on them significantly, and have been involved in a number of large high profile cases. You know, probably the best way to describe the, the, the impact that they're having when we had the HMI inspectors come uh, more recently, I talked to them about some of the work that the, the team do. Um, and I quoted the fact that we'd had um, 20 convictions over the course of the kind of 12 month period where we've seen people go down you know, for custodial sentences in the region of 15 years and so on and so forth. And the HMI were astounded by that, so much so that we went away to kind of check on whether what I was saying was actually factual, which is fine, that's what they're there for. Um, and he went away and he, he got <coughs> provided with all of the details and our convictions and our involvement and how we'd been involved in securing that outcome. The probably the most recent one being through a, an operation called Operation Milnet, which as, as I say, an individual who'd, who'd be operating in the Wavertree area had set at least, to our knowledge, 100 plus really bin fires over the course of a period of time. Some of them in the street, some of them up against people's properties, some of them deliberate with the potential to cause you know, loss of life. As a result of that, that individual got a 15 year custodial sentence. But back on, that's on the back of the, the fire investigation team and the work that we do at Merseyside Police. But that's an important to, for you to get a grasp of the car there the breadth of the work to do, the significance of that work and how that informs not only the, our, our local This is what our, our, our local outcome but certainly those of, of, of Merseyside Police um, and you know we, we're looking to kind of enhance that and support that and continue to support it um, we talked earlier on about expert witnesses and we've got our staff qualified to the level of expert witness so not only can we go and investigate the fire, they are also able to, um, to provide that information back through the, the, the judicial system. Um, and then you know, the, the staffing implications just relate to us moving that on a step further because we will be seeking ISO accreditation um, against the ISO standard 17020, which means that they will be able to utilise all their skills effectively now and into the future. Um, I'll probably pause at that point, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Anybody got any questions or comments there? Yeah, Leslie? 
Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, Roy? Yeah, um, I, I just want to, if I could, just, just remind colleagues um, when, when it was Phil mentioned wheelie bins, it's, it's only a couple of years ago where, thanks to the <coughs> fire authority and the police, um, two people were murdered in Neverly. Yeah. And it was because, okay. because of somebody just setting the wheelie bin on yeah. fire next to the property. Those elderly <coughs> people died because of that and it was thanks to that, that kind of thing. So, you know, when you mention about the wheelie bin to go out, well, it's a, it's a wheelie bin, it's not. What it is is fire goes out of control and, and it, it kills people and, you know, that was it. That was it. a couple that were killed in Netherly and it was thanks to the, the work that was done at that time between the fire authority and the police that the person was caught pretty. They had been doing it on a regular basis and on this time the evidence was sufficient and, as I say, it isn't just a bit of fun as they think for me, right? It's, it's people getting killed. No, and we have to remember you, that. I suppose if you pop a, a wheelie bit up against someone's plot and set it on fire, you don't know where that had um, exactly. um, And you know, we have had people lose their little life as a result of that, that kind of way of, of operating. Um, and so, you, you know, members will know we do extensive work, particularly around the bonfire period where we are out on the streets and doing wheelie bins and putting them really back on people's paths. You know, knocking on doors, making sure they're secured <coughs> safely and, and out the way because they do become a, you know, you know, an, an opportunity for young people particularly to maybe take them and utilise them somewhere else. Um, so there's a lot of work we do to assure ourselves that the community are safe as a result of those uh, interventions. Yeah, yeah thanks Roy. Janet? Um, just to <coughs> know, um, what Leslie was saying we actually had a meeting in Sefton with the police recently and they were saying how difficult it is to get convictions they often know who the perpetrator of various things, drugs, anything are, and it takes a long, a lot of undercover, a lot of work to get the proof and uh, make it stand up in court. So it, it just goes to show how well the collaboration is working and how well the fire investigators' um, evidence must be for this to be happening. No, the team are very, very, very good. And right. I, say, I, I say that because they've been utilised up to our emergency side a significant amount too. People recognise that the skills that they hold, the competency that they have, um, and so we should be very proud of that asset. Okay, thanks very much. Any more? Yep. Uh, yeah, actually, just just on that, I wondered, can we can, can we get this uh, brilliant new story out? Uh, because I, I mean, I know it'll be in the public domain now because of the report, but to, to get the message out that <coughs> you know we will utilise our staff, our professional uh, staff. To, to push for you know maximum penalties in line with the police and the court system because what we need to be saying is you know we've we've got all these people who have been uh, tried or pleaded guilty for us and, and it, it ranges from three months to 27 years so depending on the severity we you know we need to get the message out we will work with partners we will find you and we will make sure that and the heaviest penalties are applied because it's all about uh, prevention as well uh, in the first instance particularly with young people you know young people get the message oh, if i get caught and i get put away they might think twice um, and I, I just think that's the message that we need to get out okay thanks peter Jane and, okay. and deb sat at the, at the back um, and deb has responsibilities for corporate communications i'm sure she will take on board yes. those kind of comments and we'll assure yes. ourselves that that is communicated there 
Okay. Thank you very much. Can the committee agree then the recommendation uh, in paragraph 2, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3 on page 61? Agreed. Agreed. Right, thank you. We move on to agenda item 6. I think at this stage I need to ask any members of the press and public to leave us, please.